Yo, yo, David Rose. What's up, man? Yo, I didn't know I didn't know you were you're fully deaf in one year. Completely deaf in my right ear. That's wild. Yeah. And it just happened randomly? Yeah, I don't know why. Uh the story when I found out I was like four. Well, I already knew, but my parents didn't know. My mom took me to the beach and she picked up a seashell and put it to my ear and was like, Oh, can you hear the ocean? And I'm like, No, I can't hear anything in that ear. <laughs> like I didn't I just thought she knew that already. And she was like, what do you mean you can't hear in one ear? And I'm like, yeah, it was, you know, I just thought everyone couldn't hear in one ear. And then she's like, oh, we got to take you to a audiologist. And they went there and they did all these tests. And they're like, yeah, your kid's really deaf. Oh, man. So completely nothing. Nothing. I've got like a couple of like super high frequencies, like, like the kind of stuff a dog would hear, like really, really high. So if you oh. like hit my ear with enough sound... It just kind of tingles, but it doesn't feel like hearing. It literally just feels like getting an electric shock. So for all, yeah, for all intents and purposes, it's gone. Wow. So if yeah. I just yelled in your ear right now, you wouldn't hear it. No, it well, yeah, I wouldn't hear it. That's but, wild. But I would still hear it because sound well, travels yeah, around. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just goes straight into the yeah. ear and not out the other. Well, people sometimes ask that. They're like, oh, can I say something into your ear? And I'm like, yeah, but I'll hear you because <laughs> right, there's yeah. another ear on the other side of my head. But yeah, if you blocked that ear completely mm. and then yelled in that one, I wouldn't hear it. Interesting. Yeah. It's actually great. My girlfriend snores. So I just sleep on my good ear. <laughs> it's the best. Is that, does it actually help? Yeah. I can't hear anything. If I lie on my working ear at night, I'd mute. Actually, so like if there's traffic or like my grandmother used to live next to a freeway and I always had the room with the night, the, the comfiest bed was in the loudest room. So I used to just sleep in the, the room next to the freeway. Couldn't hear a thing. The best. That's amazing. Yeah, it's great. You actually can't beat that. Yeah. Now, you know what's really good? On dates, where you go on a date with a girl and the first date, you're sitting, you're normally a little bit apart from one another because you're still f feeling each other out. But I used to go, I, I need to sit next to you so I ah. can hear you. So then you've got this artificial proximity and then just because you're leaning over and talking to them, they're like, oh, maybe I like this guy. And they like... <laughs> I feel like they got a little tricked into liking me more mm. than they otherwise would have just because I was close to them. But he's got that deaf charm. That deaf riz. <laughs> <laughs> deaf riz. Deaf riz. That's my rapper name. Deaf That's riz. pretty good, man. That's pretty good. You should, that should be the name of your next album. It should be. Or the name of like a comedy show or a festival you, you put on. Well, I wanted to do a show here. There's a, there's a venue in Melbourne that's very... Uh, it's a very like progressive, supportive environment for comedy, um, but they they pride themselves on being very like progressive. And I asked them if they wanted to do a deaf show, so I wanted to get a bunch of comics and then market it to the deaf community, and then have like a TV with subtitles. That's hilarious. On the stage for the like, have it live subtitles or have someone doing sign language interpreting. And the booker emailed me and said, "Oh yeah, we'd like to do it, but." Um, just so you know, we're not a we're not an accessible venue. We have a staircase. So like I hope that's not a problem. And I'm like, what do you think they're not gonna hear their way up the stairs? It's like <laughs> it's a different disability. Completely backwards. Yeah. Yeah. But they just heard the word disabled and then they just were like, Oh, well, there's only one type of disabled person. Of course. Yeah. How how which, bigoted of them. Which is very progressive. It's actually not progressive. I know. I know. They should be shamed. I know. Name the venue right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. That'd be a great idea for yeah. my career. I know, right? So has that, I mean, I know you have a girlfriend right now, but has that ever actually helped you? Like, you know, it's like we were joking about having deaf Riz or whatever, but like, does that actually like work when if you're on a no, date? totally. Or yeah. Like, or, or like, cause you know, girls for some reason used to get very excited and be like, oh, can I whisper in your ear? And then, you know, they whisper in your ear and then they give you a little kiss and then you go from there. It's, it's great. <laughs> just, just a little tingle. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, they'd whisper in your ear and then they go, D what did I say? And you turn to tell them and then <laughs> now you're just making out. It's perfect. Yeah, it works. Uh, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know if, I don't know if other disabilities have the same thing. Like, I don't know if girls are like, oh, can I like kiss your stump? Or something? <laughs> stump. <laughs> Or yeah, if you're like in a wheelchair, like you can get them to sit on you. I bet that works. You'd be like, oh, I don't feel anything. Yeah, I bet that works. And then they're like, oh, can you feel this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, I, I'm sure that works. Disabled Riz. You know, they say like chicks dig scars, but women also apparently just like disabled people. 
It's not, it's not a bad. It's well, very progressive. Stephen Hawking him. cheated on his wife. Okay, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. He had an affair How? while he was in the chair. His nurse fell in love with him. How? Well, the only way I can think is it happened is that he must he must have had like enough time to like preload a bunch of romantic stuff into <laughs> the computer. So then when she came in, he could just bang, 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 hit her with like love letters that he'd been writing all night. But yeah, he cheated on his wife. He's, he was just crushing with that nurse. Yeah, they he slept on, together. He was on fire. What do you mean sleep? How does he even sleep? With, you can't, he's not doing anything. Yeah, I guess she was doing all the work. On what? <laughs> well, I think it still works. I think that bit still know. works because there's no muscle. It's just blood vessels. That's wild. So I think if you still, if you got blood, you you can do it. He's the real disabled Riz King. He is. He is. <laughs> yeah. And that's why he went to Epstein's Island. There you go. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, speaking of death, um, how does it affect you in comedy? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it's, it's probably easier for other people to tell you than for me because I don't know. I don't know. It's just I've always been doing comedy with hearing loss. So, I mean, it'd be more interesting if you lost hearing and then had to do comedy. And Before you, you started comedy, you're saying? No, I mean, like, if you were doing comedy now yeah. and then you lost your hearing, oh, you'd probably know more how it affects you than I do. Right. Because, like, yeah, people ask me that sometimes. They're like, oh, what's it like? I'm like, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's, the it's only, just your regular experience. Yeah, it's the only life I've ever had. But you said, because you were mentioning how, like, sometimes you do this thing with your, with your... Well, yeah, a comic once said to me that he thought it was cool how I was, like, talking to the audience, like I was telling them a secret, but it really is just me leaning to hear them. Heckling is weird. I, I don't mind hecklers, but I can't hear them half the time. So if someone yells out, I just, it's awkward, because I'm like, I don't know what you said. You have to repeat yourself. Um, and, like, crowd work, I only ever... Talk, uh, most people do it anyway. I only ever really talk to the front row because if it's four rows back, I'm missing a lot. Oh. If I can't lip read, I can't. Oh, really? I didn't even know I had lip read until COVID. And then everyone started wearing masks. Oh. And I was like, oh, I can't understand anyone. I didn't realize how much I relied on visual cues to figure oh. out what people were saying. I didn't realize that. You probably do it too without realizing. I think most people do it. But I think so. There was a big uptick in people getting diagnosed with hearing loss during COVID because they suddenly realized they couldn't understand what people were saying. And then like, maybe there's something wrong with my ears. <laughs> maybe yeah. I'm the problem. Maybe I'm the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More people should be saying that about themselves, you know? That, yeah. yeah. It would be good if more people would say that. I yeah, think. it would be. Um, so wait, you're saying... Well, maybe they do. I just don't hear them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deaf Riz. Um, if that's not the name of the episode. It has, it's got to be Deaf Riz. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to write that. Um, <laughs> that's going to be the name of your next special. I'm saying it right now, all right? There's a great uh, Canadian comic called DJ Demers. Yeah, Dem yeah, yeah. He's, and he's deaf. Yeah. He's got uh, a, what he's got a special called uh, Uninterpreted. Yeah. And he's got another one called like, uh, oh, I forget the names of his specials, but I talked to him about hearing loss. Okay. Because I made a documentary for uh, the ABC, which is like your CBS, is it? Uh, CBC, CBC, same thing, yeah, yeah. similar, yeah. Yeah, because I pitched them a bunch of, because I have a law degree, I pitched you them a, a bunch of- law degree? Yeah. And I right. pitched them a bunch of stories about- Because I'm Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah, no, it's because I, you know what's funny? I did a comedy show it called The Law Review, which was like a, a comedy law, like the law faculty at Monash, what, the uni I went to, does a comedy show every year with law students and I applied to be in it and then I had such a good time. I'm like, I should get a law degree because I thought that was indicative of what actually having a law degree was like. It wasn't. It was what a, a waste flex. Of time. Yeah. Yeah. But what was I saying? Yeah, sorry. I cut you up there. Oh, yeah. I, I had to say that. Yeah. I pitched them a bunch of stories about like legal stuff, about like legal reform and about like indigenous kids in detention here. They weren't interested at all. And then I went, hey, I got a disability. Can I do something about that? And they were like, oh, yeah, come on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything you need. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up doing a documentary about hearing loss and I talked to DJ about it. Interesting. Very interesting. Because he has hearing aids. He is like proper, mm -hmm. he's proper deaf. If he takes them out, he can't hear anything. I know, yeah. yeah. No, I, he was like a, a guy a lot of comics would talk about back when I was in Canada. I, I never met him, but um, he's really funny. His he's stuff really is really funny. funny. Yeah. And, and I think for like, 
for his particular experience of hearing loss, I think there is a like a pretty cool thing for the community seeing a deaf guy who's gone so far. He's like got a sitcom now, yeah, the, and actually, he plays a deaf guy in the sitcom, mm-hmm. which is like yeah. There's not a lot of deaf uh, famous people. I don't even know any. Yeah, exactly, right? There's not a lot of visibility for the, you know, Stevie Wonder plays the piano and is blind, blind, but there's no real, yeah. You just don't see him. Yeah, he's going to search him. Um, I was going to say you don't hear about him, but. Yeah. yeah. He's He's got got it unlocked today. That's cheap. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's cheap. Helen Keller. Helen Keller. Yeah, but but she was everything. She was. She's the whole spectrum. Yeah, she was fully everything. Yeah. She was the, you know, the rainbow, the rainbow flag, yeah, of the of this, the pride flag, yeah. She was that, but for for disabled, for disabled, <laughs> she had it all. There's Marley Matlin. Who the fuck is that? Yeah, exactly. She's who is all, that? Well, she actually she was on Apprentice, if I remember oh, correctly, and she's also an Academy Award winner. Wow. And Thomas Edison. Do you reckon? I, do you oh, better? I bet her speech went forever because I couldn't play her off. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Edison. <laughs> they have yeah, you know who was deaf in one ear? Brian Wilson, who the uh, the Beach Boys, the guy who wrote all the mm. best Beach Boys songs. Uh, there's a bunch of deaf in one ear people, but well, we're not really a community the way the deaf are. <laughs> the de- deaf people are kind of assholes too. It's the, to the half yeah. deaf community? The half deaf community. Yeah. We're well, cool. actually, if you Google who's the most popular deaf person, it's Beethoven. Popular? He's dead. Hey man, this is, this is Google. <laughs> and also, he went deaf later. He wasn't well, because of oh, the music. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was like syphilis or something. I mean, that, that probably does it. Yeah, but I think a lot of uh, um, rock stars, especially, yeah, are like again, Dave Grohl, like, deaf in one ear. But that's just because he's been yeah. playing music. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. so yeah, it's not really like your situation. We're and not. Then- we're not a group the way the way the other disabilities are. Like, there's no like half deaf. Yeah, pride. Like there are like BIPOC yeah. communities, but deaf people, like fully deaf people, <laughs> are kind of kind of dicks. To to who? To like people to who half are, deaf. Yeah, because I say I'm half deaf. They they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> because to them, deaf is like an identity. It's not a it's not a description. It's an identity. It's okay. like it's like you know how people like capitalize B in black now. It's like the black experience. Mm. Yeah, like to them, they're like. You calling yourself half deaf is like saying like, it's like saying, oh, I'm half whatever. Half black? Half black. Yeah, but not even that. Like half, like like something that's more in the cult, like a culture thing. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, Because they've got, a, I mean, they've got sign language, they've got Braille, they've got their own community. Mm. So they feel like someone saying that they're like half that is kind of like saying, oh, I'm half the community. Mm. It's like how Irish people get angry at people when they're like Irish Americans. When they go to Ireland and they're like, hey, I'm Irish. And Irish people are like, no, you're not. You're not Irish. Yeah, you're not Irish. Yeah. We're the real Irish. You're just a drunk. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's kind of like that. Interesting. Like, I've said before that I'm deaf and then I've gotten messages from deaf people like, nah. Really? Yeah, you're not You're not one of us. Like on stage you said it? Or where? Like in videos. Oh, in videos. Because yeah. I, I mean, they probably wouldn't. Again, yeah, they don't turn up. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what did they say online? What, what would you? What did you post online that made them message you? Oh, I had an old routine about being. It's like the first thing I put online that got any traction. Oh, okay. And it was just a bunch of jokes about you know, like at a rally for half deaf people going, "What do we want? What you know, all that stuff." <laughs> and um, that's good. Yeah, and then I put it up online. I got some. I got some messages from people who weren't happy. Wait, but but the, how did they know? There were subtitles on the video? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why. Well, also, they can still use the internet. They have uh, screen readers. There's, like, things that they can use to, like, navigate the internet that reads out the whole screen for them. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh. the video is called, like, Half Deaf. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So they already saw it. They're like, oh, what's this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't wait to hear this. I knew a deaf guy once. Fully deaf guy. No, no, no. Blind guy. Different. Oh, yeah. Different Different organ. one, yeah. And his phone... He had a smartphone. He had an iPhone, but it just taught like it just talked everything. 
Oh. And I couldn't figure out how he was using it, but he knew where to put his thumb and everything. But it was like, this thing just won't shut up. It's like- Oh, it's so annoying. It goes, screens on, uh, pin code now. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then it goes, uh, here are the apps on your home screen. Google, <laughs> Apple, bank, blah, blah, blah. And it just reads everything Oh my out. God. And he was using it. Just imagine this guy in the a middle of a restaurant. Screen. Screens oh, on. Google. Yeah. Google Maps. <laughs> but it's so fast. Like I Tinder. <laughs> I didn't even know it was talking, like saying words, because it's so fast. But he's just like his his brains learned to adapt. So it was like Google Tinder blah, 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 and he's just moving his thumb around. I'm like, dude, just get a Nokia. Just get a a, like a, a, uh, a, a physical button phone. Yeah. Well, I mean You don't need to do this. Yeah, I know, right? It's so annoying. Yeah. That could start fights. I know. Yeah. But then you know you then you're like, ah, what are you gonna beat up a blind guy? <laughs> Yeah, you got to be at least somewhat disabled to fight another. Yeah, because you know? I mean, even if you win, you lose. Right? That's true. If you it's beat a, up a blind, it's a lose lose. Yeah, there, I, there's a funny video I saw recently on TikTok. This guy was a uh, is like blind people um, reading horror scenes, and uh, it's them them doing braille reading horror yeah. scenes, and it's just some guy just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like a, it's so good. That was, that was fucking funny. I wonder if there's like Braille. There's probably like Braille erotica too. Braille what? Erotica. Oh, 100%. How do you no. read that? Because you got one hand. Yeah. Because <laughs> don't you need both hands? If it's really good, you use two hands. Yeah. Do you, do you just like read the bit that you find sexy and then you just- And then you think about and it. And then you take a break. That's it. And then you go back when, to yeah. the- Hey man, we can ask them. We can find them and ask. We could. They're probably not watching. They're probably- they could be listening, though. They could be listening. Their what? phones might have found it. <laughs> yeah. A stupid Neiman podcast, episode 17. David Rose, Neiman Naz. exactly like that. Yeah, Defriz. Defriz, Defriz, Defriz. It just sounds Chinese. Defriz, Defriz. Um, so does this happen every time you do a podcast? You have the construction? Oh, there's, there's been construction. Every, anybody who's watching or listening to this, to this episode, they've been through the journey of <laughs> the construction noises. Does it pick up on these? So right now. Yeah. Usually when they're hammering like oh. metal on metal. <laughs> it's like it might as well be a like what's what's that name that sets their tone? Like a beat. Yeah, a, a metronome. metronome? It's like in your face, like That's in amazing. your ear. Yeah. It, it's well, nuts. Not in your, well, one of your I mean one in yeah, one of your ears. Did they tell you cuz I assume this isn't like you've this is an Airbnb or something? As, oh they no. Told us, yeah, they told oh, they told you there was going to be construction. Oh, we knew, but the, the thing is who else is really doing a podcast in their flat but like yeah, this is true. such a good setup mm. we're like wh why it'd be stupid it's stupid not to you know do it in, in our in our place we already have the equipment and everything right yeah. so yeah but it's like this is the only drawback is the, the construction see for me it wouldn't matter like, yeah, yeah no you don't you know, you're not gonna hear it yeah <laughs> so who cares <laughs> yeah no sometimes it's distracting but you know at the same time it's like whatever like you know it's actually ha helps a little bit to like focus more and to be more zoned in it's just a good practice to kind of like especially with like stand-up being on stage, you know, when there's distractions, it's good to be aware of it, but also learn how to like tune out of it and, and focus in on what you're, what's in yeah. front of you. But have, so how have you enjoyed doing stand up in Australia so far? Have you, how different is it? Uh, than Canada? Yeah. It's funny. I always I talk about this because it's, it's relevant and it's um, something I am passionate about talking, talking about, but yeah, it's, 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 the, it's, it's very different, but um. The thing is, and I always, I always say it's more woke here. That's the number one thing I've taken away. But actually, because I want to talk to you about, because uh, the gigs that you gave me, and f first of all, because we were talking about in the green room of that, that the show we just did in the middle of fucking nowhere, and, uh, yeah. haunted horror yeah, bushes, in, in the basin, <laughs> the, the basin, uh, very very small town. Fucking, uh, we're in the middle of the woods, and I don't know how the hell you found this theater. Yeah. In the middle of the woods. But it was actually fun. It was a great little gig. Yeah. It was a great little gig. Yeah. 150 people. Nice tight space. It was cool. Um, but I realized doing out of town shows, whether I'm in Canada or here, are always better than the inner city shows. Yeah. As a rule, I think that's true. Yeah. But so what's what's the biggest difference? I see so you're headlining in Canada when you're doing shows, I assume. Well, my own shows. Like yeah. What about when you, when you do clubs? I never did clubs. You never did clubs. No, I never. I never got booked in clubs. So how would you get into stand up? Well, what were you doing, mics, and then you well, just yeah, mics like the independent rooms. There's like some the a couple comedy clubs that are more like like independently run. Yeah, it's not like one guy gatekeeping everyone yeah. and having a roster. 
because over here, I think it's this thing here too, or maybe not here specifically, but some places in, in Australia where like there's two competing rivalry clubs or whatever, where it's like, if you do one, you can't do the other. Yeah. And that's the annoying part about back home too, but. So, so you never did the big, like the yuck yucks and the mm-hmm. all those ones. I did when I first started, and uh, when it was like amateur night or like through my school. Yeah, because I was in a comedy program. Right. Yeah, Humber. It's called Humber College Comedy, and every Tuesday night we had an opportunity to go on stage at, at Yuck Yucks to like perform two minutes, whatever. But there's like ten people in the audience, maybe, or like a few people, um, or the amateur nights where it's like just anybody, any comic can come in. Um, but other than that, man, like if you're not on the roster with, I don't know what measure the, the owner, the booker has, but it's like, they only have like the same 20 people yep. over and over again, every, every night from Wednesday to Sunday. So then when you're, so, when you're doing an average show, are you, is it, it's your own show now or is it, are you doing spots around town or like, what are you doing on an average week, Monday to Friday? What are you doing? Well, now at this point, because of like building more audience online, which I feel like is more important nowadays and like being able to adapt to the online world, um, it's like I don't really need to go and do these clubs on the weekends anymore. Where like, whereas I could just either do out of town shows like in one offs, other comics who run monthly shows in certain areas or independent rooms or yeah, like our own shows where it's like it's a, I'm doing a full hour on stage yeah, rather right. than just like seven minutes in front of people who don't even know what the hell is going on so, so now so then now you're here and you're doing those seven minute spots yeah. so are you learning different things here from doing those yeah 100 percent. because i think i think you need both of them you I do you yeah. can't you can't like we were talking about how a lot of comics or comedians who get big off social media and then they just perform in front of their own audience it's easy to get comfortable it's easy to like get comfortable and like you know think you're crushing it or killing it because they're your fans and they like you for your online stuff, right? Um, but you need the the like the almost like not the shit ones, but like the um, the different sets where you're performing in front of like random people who have never seen you before. It's yeah. not typically your demographic. Well, it's like with everything, you need resistance. It's like if you go to the gym and you just keep lifting the weights that you feel comfortable lifting, you yeah. don't get any bigger. Exactly. Yeah. You got you got to progressively overload. Yeah, everything. and like at some point. Yeah, you have to put yourself into the d- uncomfortable position, like the the show we did in the middle of the woods. Well, like, you know what's funny about those shows, though, is they're not uncomfortable, but people get on un- comics get uncomfortable because they're so not used to playing those rooms that they sure. they. It's funny they think there's resistance there, where actually it's like a f- it's it's a, fun. a home run. Yeah, if you just treat them like people, that's true. It's it's harder to do an inner city room than a, than a regional gig oh i know i I agree with that yeah yeah but it's funny seeing the people that only do inner city rooms then they come out and they're like oh what is this who are these people they think it's like silence of the lambs or like (laughs) uh, no the hills have eyes hills have eyes yeah yeah Yeah. and you're like no they're just people i know well and they're people that aren't self-conscious because they're just like i don't know i don't know what it is about smaller towns where people are less worried about what other people think of them because you'd think it'd be the opposite you'd think they'd be more worried because Everyone knows each other, but instead they're like, "Yeah, say anything you want." Yeah. Oh, hey, Diane. Yeah, saw you at the the grocery store the other day. Yeah, how was yeah. that cheese? You literally, you do these gigs and you like, you point at Diane, you call her a retard, and then yeah. every all their friends laugh. And yeah, then, like the they love it. Day, they're like, like yeah. "Hey, it's Diane the retard." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's her. Yeah. Yeah, we love that. We all we always call her that too. Yeah. But that the, well, that's that's the thing is because I think people who are in small towns they they just like they're comfortable who with who like where they are and the things they have. Yep. So naturally, they're like, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, it's just, they, they go to this comedy show. They're, they're, they're more open, I think, and less pressured from all the inner city talk about like all the, all the stimulation that happens with like all the protests and, I don't know, just people being woke and more progressive and it's like in your face more. But over there, they're kind of like a little bit disassociated from like all the, the shit that's happening in the world. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like a little bit. So that's why I feel like they're more open to to laughing and, you know, just being more relaxed. See, this is why times. this is why I liked the comedy clubs in New York because I got the feeling that, like, once a city hits a certain size, there's too many people for you to be self-conscious. Like, it goes the other way again. Like, New York is, like, a whole bunch of little towns that all live together. Mm-hmm. Like, you go to the comedy clubs and everyone's – it's just a free-for-all. Because no one really cares because there's just so many people there. 
And it's like, you know, you've got your your Brooklyn rooms that people are, have one way of doing comedy and then you've got your Manhattan rooms that people got one way of doing it and your Long Islands or whatever. Like everyone's got their own thing going on. Whereas here it's like there's only really one comedy scene. Like we're all basically in the same pot together. So we are like... I think it's also comics get self-conscious when other comics are in the room. When you do these one-nighters in other places, there's only like three of you. I know. There's not 10 comics at the back judging you. Right. And that probably helps as well. You're saying it's better here for that? No, I just mean in general. Like if you're, in a, if you're doing a one-nighter somewhere small, you're not getting judged as much because oh, yeah. there's not as many comics in the room watching you as well. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you're in the city and you're doing a gig, there's probably like 20 comics watching you. But I kind of feel like in a huge scene like New York or London, the scene's so big that there's com- the comics are all scattered around anyway. Even if you're all in the city, you're all doing different clubs. So there's not that many of you in any given gig. So maybe there's a freedom there too. I don't know. I could yeah. be talking out my ass. No, no, I, I agree. I, I think that there is that pressure of knowing there's comics in the back of the room especially at like the city shows, inner city shows where they're just like, which they are they're, Some of them probably are judging or they're enjoying it if yeah. they like whatever. But like there are naturally as comedians, that's why I feel like it's, you get into your head a lot about those things with it because you want to impress your peers mm. at the same time. It's not just with the audience. You want to, you want to almost like get their validation. Like, yo man, like I'm funny. Like book me in the future. You yeah. know? Yeah. You, you always, you kind of always had that, especially when you're first starting out. And so, uh, that's why the inner the, the 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 small town shows that we do, like especially like specifically the one we did recently. I'm like, yeah, it's just me and these people. I, like, I, I don't know. I, I I do generally feel like I'm more loose on those ones. Yeah, yeah, which is nice. But and it's also fun for you because you're like, especially if you're a foreigner, you're the only you're yeah. the only one of you that's ever been there. Right. Exactly. Literally. <laughs> Yeah. No, legit, because it was all white people. Yeah, it's all over the age of 55. But that's but like, like, almost every comedy audience in Australia is all white people. That's, yeah, that's the difference between here and Canada. I'll tell you that. Because in Canada, well, it's not fair, maybe because Toronto is the, such a multicultural place, you're bound to have different people. But generally, like audiences, actually, I feel like there are more white people who go to comedy sh- shows in general, even still over there but there are other still people go. other people yeah. who still go well like, he's you know? but here it's just it's mainly purely white which i don't know why yeah but I, there's just no culture for it and here's, like, here's the thing about australia australia is arguably the most multi-ethnic of any country in the west like um i think it's like a quarter or it might even be a third of all australians were not born in australia right now right now huge percentage of our country was not born here and even larger percentage their parents are the first ones to move mm-hmm. here australia has a crazy immigration rate like more than many 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 other countries japan i think last year took in like 17 people 17 yeah the, like immigrants yeah yeah because they're very tough they, 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 they don't allow it, it a lot might of have been asylum seekers or something like it might not have been financial immigrants but but any, Australia has a crazy immigration rate. Like yeah. we, on average, will bring in like almost a million people a year. That's insane. It's a lot of people. So we're like, we're super multi-ethnic. If you walk around the street of Melbourne, it looks like Asia. I mean, which well, is, yeah, we're in Asia. So it kind of makes sense. We're in Australasia. It makes sense that there'd be a lot of Asian people here. But the audience that goes to see live comedy is very white. Mm-hmm. And when you go to like the TV networks, like if you ever go to one of the, there's a network here and you walk down the hall and they have a, a hallway of portraits of every um, major star on the network. And it's like a clan rally. You're walking down the room, like, what are all these white people? <laughs> it's so creepy just seeing all these white faces staring at you. Uh-huh. But that's just the Australian entertainment industry. In both in terms of who goes, and who performs, it's incredibly white. And it's it's weird when you walk around the city and you're like, all these other people, why why none of these other <laughs> racial groups go to comedy shows? Well, that, well that, that's, what, that's why I'm confused because I'm like, well, how do you get those people to go to the shows? I don't know. And it, it, it to be honest, it kind of screws with your 
head, especially when you're doing like the Melbourne Comedy Festival, because a lot of it is you stand on the street and you hand out flyers to people. You're just barking for your own show. Mm-hmm. But like you end up profiling people because you see like an older Asian lady walk past <laughs> and you're like, she's not coming. She doesn't want to come to the show. No, 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 no. I had to go grocery stop. Yeah. Go to, I need to buy food, buy food. And so it also is self-selecting where I feel like then com- like people unconsciously start making their audience a little more, <laughs> you know, like Caucasian. <laughs> like they start performing, you know, they start just doing jokes that you're like, who is this for? You know? <laughs> Other than other white people. Right. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm I, sorry. I'm just thinking about you barking on the street and then looking at, like, handing out flyers and some Asian lady comes up. Oh, David Rose. <laughs> Big fan. Big. Oh, my God. David Rose. <laughs> like, sorry. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> we don't allow your kind in. Yeah, it's sorry. This is a pure Caucasian show, ma'am. Yeah. All right? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't want, I don't want to buy you, any squid you. You may control the economy, but you won't control <laughs> <Yeah>. my audience. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's weird. I wish it were better. I wish there were more. And it's like everyone's a person. Like everyone likes laughing. There's no like, it's not like some weird racist thing where you're like, oh, the Chinese just don't like comedy. But for whatever reason, the Australian entertainment industry at the moment I, just doesn't seem to be very accepting or welcoming to other groups of people. Which is weird because like I mentioned in the beginning, it's such a woke progressive place here. And they claim to be progressive. But I'm like, where is the progression? Right. Like I have this joke that it's my favorite joke at the moment where I talk about indigenous issues. And I go, um, everyone in Melbourne, we're very pro-indigenous rights. We're very in favor of Aboriginal rights. And then we go to other states and we see them and we lock our cars. Because that's, that's that in a nutshell. It's like, oh, we want to talk about, we want to be like on your team, but you don't actually have to like come. Like there's a there's a thing that happens here every year. Invasion Day is what people are now calling it. It's invasion Australia, Day, Australia Day. It's, Jesus, but Indigenous people call it Invasion Day because it it sort of commemorates the the formation of modern Australia, and that to them is connected to the pain of the genocide that happened. But I saw once I was in Perth. There's a lot of Aboriginal people in Western Australia, and I saw these white girls handing out flyers for a rally to protest Australia Day and to be like, a genocide happened, we're very progressive, we're very ashamed, blah, blah, blah. Handing out flights only to white people. Literally saw Aboriginal people walk past them and the, these girls be like, ah, they're not going to come. Like not even handing them to the people that you're allegedly like fighting for. <laughs> That's Australia. Classic. And Australian audiences and Australians in general – at least in small towns, uh, sorry, at least in the city, not in small towns, are uh, very nervous about talking about race because yeah. for them, they think that mentioning race is bigoted. So, like, if you make a joke about brown people, they think that's the same thing as hating brown people. Whereas, in fact, you make a joke about brown people and brown people are in the crowd. They're like, hey, it's me. They love it. They love it. And you'd notice that in, I uh, would be sure, in Canada – the black rooms, black comics, mm-hmm. make fun of black people. White people all have jokes about black people, about Hispanic people. It's all, we're all up for a laugh and we're all going to be the target at one point. Here, we used to be such a racist country that if you mentioned another race, you were going to say something fucked up. So now we've gone the other way where we're like, we don't say anything. And if you even mention another, that other races exist, now you look racist. That's wild. I know. I was saying to an audience once, I was like, I, there were these brown girls on the show and I made a joke about, um, I don't remember what I was making a joke about. I was doing crab work. And then the girls laughed and the white people all went like, oh, and I went like, guys, they know they're brown. Like, <laughs> That's what white people in Australia think. We think that they don't know they're not white. We're like, oh, don't tell them they're not white. They might find out. <laughs> like that's how, that's how dumb we are. Where we're like, no, don't mention it. Because then they'll get self-conscious. And it's like, do you think they're not already self-conscious? Oh, my God. In a, in a room full of white people, there's four brown people, and you're not going to address it? That's fucking weird. It's fucked up. It's way weirder to not mention it. 100%. In my opinion. No, you're right. I agree with that. I think that's, that's a level-headed perspective. Yeah. Because you're in a way, that means you're 
you're almost canceling them out. Yeah, because you're not acknowledging that there's a there are different people in the world. You're treating everyone like they're white, and they're not all like we're all from. We all have different things to offer one another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and it's, I, like, and it's assuming that white is the best too. There, there you go. It's yep. assuming that like, oh, well, no, like my sense of humor and the things that I talk about are obviously the the. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, white people are arguably the least interesting people. <laughs> Do you think that? Yeah. Why? I just think like as a culture, where we're because we're so dominant, mm. it's less interesting to talk about white culture. It's right. more interesting to hear perspectives from other people. Like when you talk. I'm like, I mean, oh, that's fascinating. Well, yeah. Because I don't know any of this. True. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like, well, you also grew up around a lot more white people, no? Only white people. Right. There you go. So, yeah. I mean, naturally, because you're smart and you're more aware, you want to learn about other people and you're okay with, it's, it's maybe a dumb example because you're a comedian, but it's like, I feel like more, most people aren't like you here, where like they're open to hearing about other people's stories and their backgrounds or whatever it is. Mm. And, and, and I feel like that's the issue here is like, like, it's, like you said, they don't, they, it's like they, they, don't, they can't register. No, they're, they're open to it uh, as long as they get to not change <laughs> anything about their worldview. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying, yeah. which is still says that they think it's, they're superior. Yeah, right. It's this, it's this weird thing of being like, there's a, such a strange thing in like in in the like discourse at the moment where young white people are like, we are the worst race, we are the most racist people, we are the most horrible, like all this stuff that they like, they're like white people are the worst possible people, but then at the same time they have this view of like, yeah, but we control everyone. Yeah, calm so, down, buddy. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very strange. <laughs> like I don't know, since I was a kid, Australia's changed a lot. It just demographically, like when you, when I was a kid, if you walked around Melbourne, it was aggressively Caucasian. Oh, really? It was very, very, very white. Like and even around these areas, like like totally the CBD area, yeah. like the main twenty district? years ago, it, it was a very different looking place. Really? And now you walk around and it's like it's Asia. The, I walked to a, I went to a phone shop the other day. I literally couldn't read any of the signs. They're all in <laughs> Chinese. I'm like, what is this? Are you serious? Crazy. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, that's funny. But it's like, that's interesting. I know. Because now you got to adapt. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit. Well, I mean, like Australia used to, it's funny when you get only white people in a room for long enough, then they start like picking up on like the variations of white. Where they're like, <laughs> oh, he's Italian. <laughs> yeah. Like they used to have signs here that said like, no Italians, no Irish. No. Yeah. Those used to what? be. Yeah. Wait, where? Businesses used to in this like in the fifties or whatever. In the fifties. Used, used to have signs in the window when it would say like no dogs, no Irish. What? Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Why? Because the Irish were like the Irish were the colonizers? No, they were like the poor gross people That's that came crazy. over as as prisoners or came over as like indentured servants. Indentured servants? They're yeah. like free, but not free. So they they were they would have like debt that they need to pay off. Oh, so until they paid their debt off, they were slaves, essentially. So if you go to like Jamaica, Jamaican the Jamaican accent has a bit of an Irish yeah. thing to it, and that's yeah. because the Irish and the the black people who were brought from Africa to to Jamaica, they were both slaves. So the Irish and the Jamaicans were like kind of friends because the British were fucking them both. Ah. And that's why they sound a little Irish now. That's true. Yeah. I have noticed that. So here we had a big Irish thing too. When the convicts first came here, a lot of the convicts were Irish. Ned Kelly, who was uh, like a bush ranger, like a folk hero, like a cowboy kind of thing. Uh, he was Irish. And what, that people hated him? No, people loved him, but he was like a terrorist. He a hated terrorist. the cops. You haven't heard about Ned Kelly? No. No one's talking about Ned. Who is this guy? So this, this guy, Irish guy, was like born to an Irish family here. Mm -hmm. And back then the police were like super corrupt, like incredibly violent. I think the cops were Irish too. And he was what was called a bush ranger. So basically he like just hung out in the, in the far, he didn't get a job. He was a bum. He didn't get a job. He had guns and he would just steal shit and like kill people's, 
sheep and eat them or whatever. But he was like a folk hero because he was sticking it to the man mm. and he was fighting against the cops who everyone saw as corrupt. And he had a thing of like, like he would, it was a bit of a Robin Hood thing. Like if he stole money, he would also give some to the local community on his way out the door. And then he, so he and his family, the Kelly gang, there were like four or five of them, they end up getting uh, in big trouble with the cops. I don't know what happened, but they were basically being hunted by the police and they were hiding out in the bush and this cop came and found them and they killed him. Oh, fuck. So then there's a huge manhunt and so the Kelly gang decides what they're going to do. There's a train coming from New South Wales to Victoria full of cops. They put bombs on the train tracks. What? They're going to blow the tracks and then kill all the cops who oh, come off the, off the train. It's going to be a giant terrorist attack, right? So they set it all up. One of the people who knows about it snitches. So the cops are going to ambush them. Uh, the Kelly gang end up in a in a pub in Glen Rowan, just like just like, it's a little town. Okay, probably somewhere it'd be good for a gig. Yeah, probably. they <laughs> yeah. end up in a pub with like all the people in the pub hostage. The police set fire to the pub oh, to wow. get them out. They escape, and then the no, here's the famous part of the story. So they're out in the bush, kind of like cowboys running for the law. They start stealing from farms like plows and like sheet metal. They make themselves suits of armor, like big suits of just steel from these from these farms. And they plan to have a last stand. And this is where the train thing comes in. Oh. They plan to have a last stand, blow the tracks, cops come off, they start shooting them. They're wearing armor, so the bullets are going to bounce off. Wow. So the cops find out about their plan. So they ambush them, but they're still wearing the armor and they end up in a big shootout with the cops and the bullets are just bouncing off. Um, but n they didn't have armor on their legs. Oh, so, they so the cops shoot their legs out. Uh, a couple of them die. Ned, the leader, survives. They take him to hospital, nurse him back to health, get him fit and ready again, put him on trial, and then they hang him. Wow. So they nurse him back to health just to kill him anyway. That's savage. And his... Uh, his final words were, such is life. They hanged him in Melbourne jail. Holy just up shit. The road. And they've got his suit of armour in the State Library. You should go look at it. The Man. State Library of Victoria, they've got his suit of armour. It's still got the bullet holes in it. Bruh. It's one of the craziest things. But, like, he was an Irish guy. And he was considered, like, a downtrodden Irish guy. Mm. Which is why he started, like, fighting the cops. And he became this folk hero. Right. Now he's just a white guy. Now he's just another white guy. Yeah, he's just like, uh, op op oppressor. Yeah. <laughs> like now he, it's, yeah. Wow. What, this is the, that's, that's probably one of the best history lessons I've gotten. Yeah, Ned Kelly. I mean, I got a bunch of it wrong, I think, but he's- um, Okay, we'll act like it's 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 he, It's real. amazing. Wait a minute. I'll see if I can find his his suit of armor. It's amazing. That's a, yeah, I actually, that's interesting, man. I mean, so you, because I've, I've heard that Australia obviously is full, it used to be full of prisoners. This is this is the, it's an island that is that was so full of prisoners. That's Ned. I don't know if you can see that. In the middle. That's Ned Kelly. That's a fucking nice beard. That's a and, fat beard. I like that beard. And that is his suit of armor. Oh, that's gangster. So that's in the state library. Wow. Shit, I gotta see, go check that shit out. You can literally leave. see the bullet holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the island. I know. That's wild, yeah. man. And they wow. killed a they killed a bunch yeah, yeah. of cops. Oh, that's that's insane, man. Yeah. And they're all white. Yeah. Everybody's white on white crime, man. White yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, that, we that, that's how I feel doing comedy shows. White on white crime. <laughs> well, you you're now white. People I'm white? No, people think you're white, I assume. They do when I go on stage, because especially when people tell, tell them I'm coming from Canada. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, another white guy. Yeah, you could pass. I, that's, I you're know. You're a little hairy. If you, I'm a little hairy. If you trim the eyebrows, I think you could get away with it. That's that's why I don't do it anymore. Yeah, right? I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> well, actually, you know what's funny? If I do my eyebrows, which yeah. I do yeah. once in a while, like I thread them, get them threaded, yeah. they look too good, which means you lose your racial privilege. <laughs> no, I actually gain it because I look more Persian. Oh, you look more. I actually perfect. think I because it looks so well done. Yeah, right. It's like it's like oh shit, like it's an exotic eyebrow, eyebrows. Yeah, I watched this movie last night. Uh, the League of League of Ungentlemanly Warfare. This is just a movie about World War Two. 
But the the one plot point I just like couldn't get over is they cast this like Mexican girl to play this <laughs> English woman, and she's like so Mexican the whole time. They're like, you know, she's trying to infiltrate the Nazis like with the Nazis, and she's like talking about how much she hates the Jews, and you're like, you're fucking Mexican. You look Mexican. <laughs> No one believe who would believe this. Yeah, they, that's classic though. They always do that. Like they had Jake Gyllenhaal playing a Persian guy in Three Hundred. I know. It's like, no, buddy. wasn't that in uh, oh, sorry, not, Prince, Prince of Persia? Sorry, Prince of Persia. They yeah. literally called him the Prince. Literally of the Prince of Persia. How yeah. dare they? I should have been in that movie. It's like when Tom Cruise was the Last Samurai. Yeah, I'm like, bro, come on. Yeah, but I mean, it, well, actually, because back in the day, they used to have um, uh, I forget who I don't know their names, but they would make white white guys mm. into like asians like they would literally like put their <laughs> eyes back or like you know just make them look asian and even with blackface obviously that was a common thing in like movies and films so my great grandfather was a comedian oh wow really like a very famous comedian in Ooh. like his name was julian rose he was very famous in like the late 1800s to the mid 19 he died in 1935 wow really but he was huge um, Huge, like in terms of what? What do you mean by that? Sold, I think, half a million records back when records were like, like acetate. A, they weren't even vinyl yet, so they were like breakable, like very expensive. Played uh, the Royal Variety performance in front of the King and Queen of England. What? Uh, headlined the Palais Theatre here. In Melbourne. Was on Broadway in New York. He was, in, uh, he was from Philly. Oh. Played Broadway in New York. Was it like a big star? Wow. Yeah, really. you're a great grandfather. Great grandfather, uh, but so he was a Jewish comedian, and he only talked about he only did jokes about being Jewish. The first, so there's a, there was a guy here called Mo Rain. That was his name, uh, but his name was Roy Roy Rain. I don't know why his stage name was Mo. Mm. He got his start by doing an impression of my gr- great grandfather. Oh, doing Jewish jokes. <laughs> But he did it in blackface. What? So the Australian guy copied my great grandfather doing Jew jokes, but he also did it in blackface, which is like, there's so many levels of racial. Completely lunatic. Yeah. Yeah. Why the hell was he doing it in blackface? I have no idea. It's just in his biography. (laughs) I read this guy's biography and he's like, yeah, I got my start doing an impersonation of Julian Rose, but I was in blackface. And you're like, how did that help? What the fuck? Why were you being all Jewy in blackface? Yes. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Wait, uh, when was this? This is like the 1920s. Oh, so even that early on. He yeah. Was, he was doing, impre- okay. So that guy's probably dead by now. Everyone, they're all dead. Yeah. They're all dead, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Do you think that has to do with you doing comedy? I don't know. Maybe. It's in your genes. I didn't know about it until I'd already started doing comedy. How did you find out? My grandmother like sat me down and was like, you shouldn't do it. It ruined your great-grandfather's life. And I'm like, yeah, like what are you talking about? Great-grandfather? What happened to him? Yeah. yeah, he lost all his money in the stock market. Had nothing to do with comedy. He oh. made a bunch of money. Like for the time? No, he was like very, very wealthy. Like, like how much? Like millions? Yeah. And then he lost it all in the stock crash. And at the time, too, you're saying late 1800s, like millions would be yeah, insane. In the, this is in the 20s and 30s. I have a letter. I found a letter from him bitching to it's it's from the jewish theatrical guild of america and it's crazy the names are on it and it's just a letter from him bitching to his friends he's like you guys lose all your money too and it's like william morris is on it who's that like the head of the william morris agency which is now one of the biggest talent agencies in the world in la yeah he just knew that guy what and there's like bing crosby's on it there's just a whole bunch of (laughs) not bing crosby i don't remember who but there's just a whole crosby Pardon? Bill Cosby? No, not Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a bunch of Jews bitching right. about how much money they lost. Of course. It's amazing. Yeah, Bergman, 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 yeah. Bergman. Yeah, but they're Sandra. all like names you would know now if you look at them. You're like, ooh, that guy? Really? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. How, how did you wait, How did you find this letter? Uh, my grandfather and grandmother were hoarders. They never threw anything out. So like right. um, when my grandmother died, there's just a house full of shit. Um, and I was just going through it and mm. found some weird stuff. I, I think it's uh, almost like a, a rite of passage to do comedy as a Jew. Jews are funny. They're I'm not that. Funny. I'm not that Jewish though. I'm only like I wasn't raised Jewish. Oh, okay. Like my father's side of the family are Jewish. My mum's side, if you go far enough back, but I wasn't raised Jewish. Like right. I was raised an atheist. Mm, okay. Like raised atheist. My mum was like against fuck. religion. Mum was like, "There's nothing." She took me to the global atheist convention. No way. Yeah. 
Wait, wait, here? Yeah. What was the in convention? Yeah, there's a big convention in like 2010 and it was just a room full of like neckbeards. It was just- Neckbeards, that's just hilarious. Just fat guys like who were like, eh, there's no God. And we all just turned up to agree there was no God. And then like Richard Dawkins was there. Wait, who's Richard Dawkins? He was like a big atheist guy. He wrote this book, The God Delusion. I think I've heard of him. It's a big thing. There were like a, a lot of people, like thousands and thousands of wow. people. It's crazy part. So I'm like 16 and I go to this thing with my mum. And um, one day outside, there's these, these like Muslim guys protesting and being like, you're all kafir, you're all going to hell, all this stuff. And like, you know, infidels. Subhanallah. Yeah, right? And so these YouTube commenters in real life, yeah, like these trolls. all these atheists who just are the just grossest suck. humans. Yeah. They go <laughs> up and start yelling at them oh. and be like, There's no God, you're wrong. It was like in that you know that moment in culture where atheists were like very prominent and everyone was constantly there was just a big thing yeah. for for a minute there yeah. where atheists were, were really like vocal and angry and would like argue with people. Yeah. So they're arguing with these Muslim guys and I come over and I'm like listening and I actually like stopped one of the atheists. I'm like, dude, you got to let this guy talk. Like you can't just yell at him. He's got to at least tell you why he believes in God before you tell him why it's uh, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And the Muslim guy was like, thanks brother. You're still going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, thank you. Right. Anyway, so that You're all You're still happened. haram, brother. Exactly. Yeah. So that all happens. Like six months later, we get an email from the Global Atheist Convention like organizers with a picture of the dude I was talking to. No way. And they go, did, did anyone talk to this guy? He's just been arrested on terrorism charges. Holy fuck. <laughs> They're like, he was planning an attack. What? And he, I, I made a friend. <laughs> so I'm like, I know that guy. That's the guy who was like, who said thank you to yeah, me. Yeah, I was the mediator. Yeah, yeah, I was the one. Yeah, imagine Damn. if he was like doing the attack and then he saw me and he's like, "Oh, brother, you, you can you're go safe." Home. Yeah, that's that's actually funny because um, that you're, reminds me. You're one of the good ones. Yeah, yeah, that reminds me of um, uh, these these memes I've seen like people doing videos on TikTok too about like um, making friends with the school shooter. Yeah, because like, yeah. you know he comes into the school and he's like, killing, and then I'm like. All right, you're good. You can go. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, thanks, bro. Thanks. It's like just just be nice to the guy, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. You're 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 really you really. It seems like you're really into history. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just am into. Every, I just like reading. I don't know. Just what, what are some of your favorite books that you've read? Um, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you bring me here to this level, <laughs> gay. <laughs> this is all just, uh, these aren't even recording. <laughs> it was all just a, a, a setup for that. Yeah. We're, we actually were planning on saying that at the 57 minute mark. <laughs> so we could just call you Wouldn't fucking it be funny loser. you put this out and the only bit you put out is that bit? <laughs> just 30 seconds? Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> nah, he, he, he's, he's, he, he reads a lot, so he... Yeah, he's not one to talk, yeah. I didn't read, you know what, man? I started reading again, like after a long time period of just not like i used to read a lot and then just tiktok destroyed Took my brain over. man it's crazy how bad my attention span is now i used to be able to sit down and read like for hours now i'm like four pages in and i'm like Ugh. <laughs> yeah man it's so bad it's because we're comedians and you're you, because you're you posting online could mean something yeah. for your career so you're always like thinking about it yeah and it, you're distracted in a way it's so bad it's like constantly has a hold on you. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's weird because like if I wasn't posting content, I don't think I would be on these things at all. Like I have no interest in Instagram as a user. I only, yeah, put, I agree. I only put stuff on it. I'm amazed that there are people who waste their time like watching my videos. I'm like, why are you watching this? This is not it. Go outside. You don't, Do you, you, think, know. you think you have imposter syndrome? No, I just have no interest in the social media side of social media. No, I'm like, saying because you, you, you're thinking like, you know, why, why are people watching my Why videos? do people watch anything? I don't know. Like, I that's, think it's, that's it's profound. crazy that any of it's getting views. Well, it's, it's, it's become 
uh, almost ingrained into our brains yeah. that it's a part of us. Well, it's like kids so. now apparently don't like watch TV really. Like they'll watch like Bluey or whatever, but like a lot of the biggest stuff that children watch is like other children. Like what they like what? watching other kids on YouTube, like unboxing video games or whatever. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. I thought you meant like watching other kids and like they're just outside just staring at the other kids. <laughs> like just like just like fucking yayas, like the Greek grandmothers or like immigrants who just sit and watch people. A just friend, kids doing that. So a friend of mine, it's great. I love this guy. He's mental. His name's David Boyle. He's got a really funny podcast called I'm Quitting Alcohol. <laughs> really good. Um, his wife's Indian. So they've got half Indian, half, I guess he's like Irish, Australian. He's Australian, but I think his family Irish. So they got this half Indian, half oppressor. Right, exactly. (laughs) So he he goes to India all the time with his wife. And he said like in India, you just, like the kids don't have phones. They just, they're free range. You just put them outside. Like chickens. You literally just chuck them outside and then you go come back in five hours and you just trust that your children aren't going to (laughs) die. Your little white children <laughs> in india that are definitely worth a lot of money if right someone takes the 100 percent. so they just every time they're in india the kids just play in the street with the the street kids they just that's all they do so then they came back to australia and uh, his kids were like sitting in front of the tv and he was like that sucks let's do what we did in india so we just took his kids and put them outside he's like go play and they're like why there's no one here like because it's australia all the other kids are inside oh wow because you know we're all trapped in our own homes now. The other kids are like pressed up against the glass. Yeah. And he goes, Dad, just go. So he sends his kids outside. Apparently within like four minutes, this kid had like four other friends. Wow, really? These other kids had seen. They're like, oh, there, there's another kid. And they don't, they, none of, they don't actually want to be inside. Of course they, they don't. They all want to hang out, but the parents aren't going to let them out anymore. Yeah, for many reasons. Well, right. one, because of, because technology and social media has taken over. Yeah. It's become a part of the routine of life. Yeah. It's not even a cultural thing. It's it's actually become, I think, a, a human habit to be in the technology in a way. Yeah, it's, it's you don't, and they learn it from their parents. But like, I was I was at his house the other day, and like, literally, his neighbor's three year old daughter was at their house, and then the three year old daughter's like, "I'm gonna go home now." And David's like, All "Right, see ya." <laughs> Just let this kid walk home. What? And it's like. That's that's a throwback to a bygone era, isn't it? That's a that's just, nostalgic. Just letting a three year old walk themselves home. That would let me. That would actually make me cry if I saw that. Yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, so nostalgic. He's such a lunatic as well. His wife goes, "Hey, can you check that she got home?" And he goes, "Eh, she's fine." <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, dude, gonna... she's a three year old child. You got to check <laughs> if she's home. So he just leans out the window and yells to his neighbor. He's like, "Steve, is your kid home yet?" <laughs> Wild. Three I don't know old? anyone else who does who lives like this now. I have no idea. It's the best. It's, it's an anomaly, actually. If you're yeah. hearing about this, yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not. It's true, man. Fucking, it's sad because. Well, it's I, sad because she never got home. Ah, uh, well. There but you have that's it. the price we pay. <laughs> the freedom, freedom, yeah, and, and oppression, um, and and white on white crime. Um, <laughs> so it's funny because when I, I'm very grateful, and I, don't, I feel you're 29, right? 30. Same yeah. as yeah. When's your birthday? Uh, like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, ish. Uh, oh, okay, fifth of May. Fifth of May. Okay. Same birthday as Karl Marx. Wow. Mm-hmm. And Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, isn't Karl Marx a communist or whatever? Like yeah, he's the communist. The communist. Uh, the communist. Like yeah. The guy. Karl Marx and Katy Perry are both communists. Are no, the she's, communists? She's capitalist. <laughs> she's very capitalist. Yeah, she's definitely very capitalist. There was another one I read about Che Guevara, I think. Wow, you, man, you're just. I think so. On a roll with the communists. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. Nerd. You, you rat fuck. <laughs> See, if I didn't know, I would just assume you guys were Cuban. See? Yeah. Oh, it's true. Well, especially him though. He looks fucking. Yeah, you look Latino. He looks Puerto Rican, bro. You do. You you catch this guy after a, a nice t- tan day. He's fucking Mexico, bro. It's kind of weird. It's weird that you're both. Presu- you, I assume you have the same parents. Yeah, we're, one of you has just come out like like the printer ran out of ink with you. <laughs> it's got to be him because I look so much like my mom. Yeah, but he didn't look so much like any of my parents. Yes, any. There's only two of them, right? Yeah, 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 I guess. <laughs> any. <laughs> Normally people say either. They're like, any. <laughs> any of my parents. I don't know where they are. But, 
but no yeah it's uh it's, no one ever thinks we're related to which is funny but um do you think we look alike yeah you got some facial similarities but but i would think yeah. you were cousins if, right if yeah I didn't. at most we get that or bet or friends okay, yeah what do you older? Uh, i'm gonna say i'm gonna say you're older because you handle the money <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> it's are true. Any, are there any Jews in Iran now? There's a plenty. There's plenty of Jews. Yeah. There's a lot of Jewish Iranians. Really? Yeah, but in Iran? Yeah. Well, maybe, but mostly, mostly outside of Iran, I think. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a there's a lot of them. I mean, given what I know about the Iranian regime, I'm pretty sure Jews in Iran wouldn't fair very well yeah that's no that's they my wouldn't, feeling right yeah they yeah. wouldn't be there yeah or they wouldn't act like they were jewish i mean it yeah it literally says here as of 2021 there's a prox like they're guessing there's only around eight thousand jews who still live in iran right but yeah right you know australia has the high well melbourne specifically it might be different now because of the passage of time but at one point melbourne had the highest number of holocaust survivors anywhere outside of israel because basically wow. after the war, the British got the Jews who were left and they were like, where do you want to go? And the Jews were like, as far away as possible. <laughs> Send me to the end of the fucking earth. Yeah. And they were like, Melbourne? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of Jews in Melbourne now. No worries, mate. You walk around, it's weird. You walk around like Elstonwick where you did that gig. Yeah, that cinema gig. Right? Yeah. And the oh, gig's smart. on a Friday night, which is Shabbat. So oh. all, all, all the Orthodox Jews are going to Shabbat. So you drive down the road and there's all these guys with the hats and the curls yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. And you're like, whoa. Wait, where do these, these people come from? Yeah, yeah. That's true. I never I, I, I never thought there were Jews here. Yeah, a lot of Jews. I, I actually... A friend of mine, his grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. And a couple of years ago, they did a census and the government were like, you know, what are you? And she didn't tell him she was Jewish because she's like, I don't trust the government to know I'm Jewish. And I'm like, yeah, but you live in Elstonwick. Like... <laughs> And your last name is like Rabinowitz. Like, All right, yeah. They're going to be any more. They're going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. <laughs> Why are they all in S Elsternwick? I That's just where they ended up, I guess. It's, a, right. it's an interesting one. I remember actually when I when I did that show a few weeks ago, it was, um, it was like a really nice venue too. That was the first show I told you I did a, a, a set in a movie theater. It was the first time in my life, in my career I've ever done that. Yeah. It was pretty cool. It was nice. Um, it's actually a good setup for a show, to be honest. You know what's interesting about that? So, like, when COVID happened here, um, we had these weird rules, like, about density. So, like, uh, you could have one person per four square meters, which meant that you couldn't do a show in a in a little room because it just – you'd only have, like, four people. But for some reason – I never understood this because it was all about, like, stopping other people getting COVID, right? You could do a show in a 300-seat theatre – you could have 150 people in there if everyone sat like two chairs apart. Yeah. But you're like, but that's way worse than having 20 people in a room. Yeah. All together. 150 people. There's way bigger. Surely chance. there's more chance of getting COVID there. <laughs> surely, yeah. But for whatever reason, that was the rule. And because movies weren't coming out mm. really during COVID, I messaged some cinemas because I wanted to do gigs. I'm like, well, can we do a show here? You've got a big room. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. So, so that those shows started during COVID, and then after COVID ended, because uh, it's over now, because no one's ever died of it since. <laughs> uh, it's a scam. The shows have just kept going. You know, more people have died of COVID under Biden than Trump. Really? Yeah. I wonder why. This is more, more time, I guess. Also, I feel like because Biden has not allowed people to, to, to. I feel like he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't let people live a proper life because of all the fucking bullshit he's 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 done for like these big cities you know what I'm saying like they they've let in so many like immigrants from outside of America mm -hmm. that have come in and it's like it's made it worse they haven't actually like fixed the root of the problem you know what I'm saying they just kind of added shit that it's don't even need to be worked on but like because like I feel like they didn't actually fix the real issue at first at hand. And they just kept on adding more problems to it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Tr it's tricky. You know how like obesity is like one of the biggest problems in America? Well, right? yeah. I mean, you obviously. know, like once you get really fat, it's way harder to lose weight because it's like it's now just the the 
ball has rolled for too long, there's too much momentum. Mm. Like I think that's America. Like America itself is obese with like it it its problems. Like it just it's had it's had so much opportunity to fix problems and has done so little to address them that now all these issues are compounding and now you'd have to be like some crazy guy to come in and fix everything. Right. Because you have to strip everything back to to the roots and, and redo it all. Well, that's why I feel like if Trump gets back into office, I feel like he'll fix him, fix a lot of the problems. You think Trump will fix it? I, well, I mean, he, I think he was at least doing something when he was in office. Like, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm, I fully agree with everything he says or everything he does, and I don't even know a lot about it, what's it, going on. But I, I don't like him because I think he's a fascist, but I also can see why if I were living in America, I'd be like, that. maybe that's the only option. To, to to really change shit, yeah. I don't. Ag- yeah, I don't like him. Right, but I can I can still see why people voted for him. Well, I, 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 this, I mean, to be honest, it's it's the they're both not great at all. Yeah, this is one's like a lesser evil, I guess, whatever you want to call it. But I just feel like, um, you know, especially with like with like all the the defunding of the police and all that shit, you know, all that stuff. You, you get there? Yeah, yeah. I'm just my girlfriend's probably calling me because she's panicked about our flight. Oh shit! Yeah, because you're you're flying together. Yeah, yeah. What time are you coming yeah. home? Uh, I'm gonna say send her send her a voice note. <laughs> Three. <laughs> the live on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like because you know, like all the like, under under Biden, from what I know, they defunded police, all that, all, all all the other shit. They've just like I feel like they they've the crime has gone up, taxes are crazy. But I feel like under under Trump, he kind of like had a, a, at least those things in order. And I feel like I don't know. There's just so many nuances I I don't even know about. But I'm just saying, at least there I felt like there was actually something being done. I don't think Trump. I don't think Trump knows anything about anything. I think that's. The biggest, I think genuinely, I think that's the biggest problem with him. I think he's such a moron that like you can't have that guy leading the country. Yeah, yeah you can't have an sure. actual, you can't have a man with a, without a brain leading <laughs> the country. Because I think the the thing that president really does more than anything else is sets the tone for the rest of the country. Yeah, because you can't change anything in four years. You can't even really change anything in eight years. No, but you can affect the way people talk. Yeah. And I don't think it was healthy for America to have that guy, that pugilistic, so. yeah. argumentative New York real estate guy at the top because everyone copied, like, you know, you have a bad boss and then everyone starts acting like the boss True. to keep the boss happy. Yeah. You can't have a guy like that in charge because it just, it take it. you just felt, Tense. I went over there pre-Trump and I went there during Trump and I went there after Trump. And every time I was there, I just felt like people's shoulders were getting higher and higher around their ears. Oh, my God. The thing about Biden is he's an old man. He doesn't have that argumentative energy. And for better or worse, it has taken the tone of America down a little bit. It's it's slightly less angry at the moment. Yeah, And I don't really want a bunch of angry, uneducated people with nuclear weapons. That's for sure. Or weapons in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I don't know I don't know anything about politics, but I just hope there's someone better than those two, man. Because yeah, I, do, not, I don't know how the fuck there's not better options. Yeah, I mean it's crazy that there's 300 million people and everyone's like, here's the best we got: two extremely old men that are like one knows nothing and one has <laughs> has forgotten all the things he knows. Yeah. Like, they're both bananas. Yeah, it's it's I mean it's yeah you wouldn't hire these guys to drive a bus. <laughs> but you, you know, literally wouldn't yeah you're right oh yeah but you can be in charge of a whole country of course yeah for sure man go ahead why not make it's all nuts. the decisions for it's me it's nuts but i kind of that's kind of why i like america too because it's like it's a country that consistently makes terrible decisions <laughs> like it's like <laughs> it's like a drunk you know a friend who's just always drunk yeah and you always get a story out of it right it's like, like reality tv like churchill said he said america can always be counted on to make the right decision after it has made all the other decisions that's America. It's right. the best. What yeah. other country is like that? They just stumbled through history drunk and angry and I know. they just fall on their ass and then they get back up and you're like, yeah. oh, I thought you were down for good that time. Yeah. Like they keep going down. You're like, surely no one gets up from that. No. And they keep they going. Keep coming up. Do you think, th- do you think they're going to be in power for much longer in the world? Well, like America, I don't know. I mean, they got nukes, right? Like that's the thing. 
they didn't have nuclear weapons. I think maybe tomorrow the world would forget about them. What about China? <laughs> if that's the problem. They've all got bombs now. That I know it's fucked. It's actually scary. destroy the world. So like, it's pretty scary. Yeah. You know what's weird? I'm, I'm less worried about China than I would be worried about like Iran having the bomb. Why is? It? Because like Iran, North Korea, in particular, those countries are run by like literally crazy people. Yeah, China. True. You can say a lot about China, but the, the people that run China are not dumb. Mm. It's like a very aggressive, competitive country. The only way to get to the top of the Communist Party is to be like ruthless and very intelligent. Mm. I don't really think that's true for like Iran or North Korea. Right. Like I don't think Definitely the Ayatollah is there because he's the smartest <laughs> guy in the room. Right? <laughs> it's just a power play. It's just a power. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't want anyone like that. No. With the ability to win the world, I know. I want like a, you know, smart, calculating dude. Right, like a self-aware, yep. self-help kind of dude. Well, because yeah, because the thing is, like, what do the Chinese Communist Party want? They want to continue being in charge. That's their main goal. Is that they just want to keep being in charge of China? But like, what does the Ayatollah want? Like, he he wants the apocalypse to happen, all the Jews to yeah. die, and like the. Just violence, the, just and he wants extremist. The prophet to come back. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't think they know. Yeah, it's like the evangelical Christians in America. Those guys scare the shit out of me. Why? Because they want Jesus to come back. And like, just, if that's your goal, that's you. If you're, if you think Jesus is coming back, then you're going to be willing to do anything to get Jesus to come back. That's true. But if you just want to be in charge of a country, you want to keep the country, right? You want the country to still exist. So that you can keep being in charge, but if you're like, "Oh, Jesus comes back when the world ends," so let's end the world. That's way scarier. Because because they, they, there's they all they see is red. Yeah, they've got a they've got a goal <laughs> that's not even like even close to no reality compa- compatible with reality. Right? Yeah, yeah. If you just want to be a dictator, it's like, all right, well, you're not gonna you're gonna destroy your own country. No, you want that. You're not going to destroy the world. Right. What's the point of being the dictator of an empty wasteland? I know. Right. I feel like eventually we'll get there somehow. Maybe yeah. not in our lifetime. Hopefully not. Well, this is, I read this book called Nuclear War, a scenario. It's like one of the scariest books I've ever read. And it's just some woman, she just interviewed everyone in like the defense department about nuclear war. And then she just basically takes you through step by step. Like, here's what would happen if a nuclear war happened. And you're like, oh, wow. So like, oh, we're so fucked if it happens. You know, if, if a country launches nukes at the US, you know how long the president has to decide whether to f- launch back? Six minutes. Six minutes? Six minutes. Six Jesus minutes. Jesus Christ. And that's, during that six minutes, he's being evacuated from the White House. To go where? Some bunker. Like, that'll work? Who knows? <laughs> I saw that, I forget her name, but I saw a clip, like I saw the whole podcast. She said something like, if one nuke is launched, it's like 72 minutes or something. To the whole world ends, yeah. Yeah, and the whole world 72 is, minutes? 72 minutes, like the whole world ends. billion people will die or something. Yeah. Wow. Like, in any given 72 minutes, the world could end. That's the craziness Bruh. of it. And, yeah, and look at the people you have who have access to the nuclear bombs. Lunatics. Lunatics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's terrifying. Fucking hell, man. Well, that's why we got to get these bombs on stage out as much as possible. <laughs> but it does kind of take the pressure off. It takes the pressure off where you're like, well, the world could end in six minutes anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let me take this six minutes on stage. Yeah. And fucking it's so crazy. It because my parents, my parents are 70. They had me late. They were 40 when they had me. So their whole lives, they grew up with Cold War. Like they just, just dad had a friend who moved to New Zealand because he thought that a nuclear apocalypse was happening oh, he wow. thought new zealand was going to be the only safe place to live because it like there wouldn't be as much fallout there or whatever like that was part of their lives they just thought about that shit all the time that's sad. and then just no one thought about it at all for like the last 30 years really and then you know what's weird i think that oppenheimer movie has started people thinking about it again i haven't seen it it's a great movie i gotta watch it but like i noticed after that came out a bunch of people in the news start talking about nuclear war again it's a sign yeah it's a terrible sign i know 
What? We've really gone off topic here, haven't we? Not really. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole point of the podcast is sometimes you just dive into. You know what? I've been doing a lot of trying to convince people to buy GameStop. Oh, <laughs> the stocks. I'm back on GameStop. <laughs> I got in on GameStop when it blew up in 2021. Oh, really? Made a couple of grand, sold it like an idiot. Fucked up. Now I'm back. We're back, baby. We're back. Back in action. I just put two grand on GameStop. I called, two grand? I, I called my parents. I'm like, I bought two grand, two grand at GameStop. <laughs> and they're like, you're an idiot. Yeah. I told my girlfriend, I'm like, you should put like 50, she has more money than me. I'm like, you should put 50 grand on GameStop. And she's like, I'm not putting 50 grand on GameStop. Anyway, the next day, I like showed her the numbers. I'm like, if you bought this yesterday, we would have $500,000 right now. Oh my God. <laughs> she didn't do it. She fucked up. You got to buy GameStop. That's well, you heard you heard you heard it here first. Well, no, don't. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not giving financial advice. That's, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to say that, otherwise you get sued. That's, oh, actually, don't buy GameStop. <laughs> but if you were gonna buy GameStop, I wouldn't say that was a bad idea. It's it's yeah, do it. Don't take it from me though. I didn't say that. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating. Wait, it, it, it's actually funny because uh, is it, I think it's because your girlfriend's American. She's from Jersey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think? Uh, What's the what's the biggest cultural difference? Uh, you know, here's the one that really still she has trouble with sometimes is that the Australian sense of humor is essentially just being mean. Australians just roast other people for no reason. Uh, and then she thinks I'm being like mean. And I'm like, no, I'm making fun of you. And she's like, you're being an asshole. And I'm like, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's a very Australian thing. I, I think- I think that's that was a big like culture shock for her. For her, I think that uh, yeah, I don't know what else. She was a little surprised. She kind of thought Australia had like free healthcare, so she was a little surprised. You have to pay. You still have to pay for it, a little bit. For some yeah. It's like you guys have free healthcare, but it's not free free. No, right. Like some things you just you absolutely have to get. You, you pay out the ass. Yep. Just, just to just to get the service. But it's still cheaper than U.S. Than the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I, you know what? I think the biggest cultural cultural shock is not so much what countries we're from, but from what classes we're from. I'm, my family are middle class, upper middle class. Like my parents made some money, but we're not wealthy. They have enough to like look after themselves in retirement. They have a house, but it's not like crazy rich. My girlfriend's family, like my girlfriend's grandfather, had a private plane. Ah. Oh. Jeez. And her parents paid for her college, totally paid for her college. Fuck she doesn't hell. have any college debt. Wow. She has a master's degree, doesn't have any college debt. Unreal. She has, she got given, she got an inheritance. Uh, she's, she's doing well. It means you're doing well, buddy. Well, she hasn't, <laughs> she hasn't worked for 18 months. She hasn't had 10 a, months? 18. She, 18 months. She moved here 18 months ago. And she hasn't worked. She hasn't had a job since. Because she doesn't want to or she just hasn't found Well, she's one. got savings. So she didn't need to work. She didn't need to work. Wow. Yeah. So I guess she well, could- You know what she <laughs> said to me the other day, which I thought was one of the craziest things I've ever heard? Apparently it's a saying in her family. This, how's this for a saying? If it's a problem that money can solve, it's not a problem. Wow. That's their saying. That's their saying. That's how you know they're That's swimming you know in money. Rich, when they're like, <laughs> if money can solve it, it's not a problem. I'm like, all my problems money can solve. Money Literally. can solve all my problems. hundred oh, percent. We talk about that all But the time. I have no money. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's my problem. Yeah. Right? That is the problem. Yeah. The problem is <laughs> the, the no money. Yeah. Must be nice. Yeah. I you mean, could- it's just different. Like, uh, it's weird talking to her where she'll tell like some story about like, oh yeah, my grandfather was flying his Cessna. Cessna. You're like, what? I don't even know what that is. It's like a plane. It's like his his plane that he owned. Unreal. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, my family had like a Honda. Like, <laughs> yeah, Honda it's, Honda Sienna. Yeah, it's yeah, just a I different am. world. Um, you, she she could take you on a whole world tour. She literally through did. private plane. She took me to India. Where she got invited to a wedding in India. In she India. Goes, in India. And she goes, "Do you want to go to India?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but I can't afford to go to India." And she's like, "I'll fly you there." So she bought me a trip to India. What, what, where did you sit? First class? Uh, no, nah, it was like economy, but like uh, not enough money, man. But we stayed at the Marriott. <laughs> the Marriott, yeah, in India, in India. They, so I don't know like, they had Marriott. It was like eight bucks, it's eight so dollars. Yeah, it's so cheap. You stay at the Marriott, you pay like 
you pay like what it would cost to stay at a shit motel here. Uh, and it's like the best hotel you've ever stayed at. Yeah. You're like, babe, don't worry. I got this. Yeah. $8. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's the biggest difference is like, I'm not, I'm like, volu- it's weird. I'm like voluntarily poor. I have a law mm. degree. I and probably could have made money. Right. But I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm flying to Sydney tonight to do a show. Uh, you actually lost money to come here. I lose money just by waking up. <laughs> <laughs> being alive is an expense it is i know yeah but so that's a diff, that's okay. that's an interesting one or like mm-hmm. the kind of places i would stay at a hotel she wouldn't even consider staying wow yeah she's like she's she's like super above it yeah she's not used to it yeah well we like i saw there was we were in a hotel once and we saw a cockroach and she's like we have to change hotels I'm like, what hotels. are you talking about what are you talking about i mean i, I don't know I've slept in a bed with cockroaches. I don't care. You're you're an animal. Yeah. I'll stay in a, a twenty dollar a night hostel. You're fucked. Yeah. And she's like, We have to stay at the Hilton. And I'm like, <laughs> What? I, yeah. yeah. But you obviously you agree. You're like you're like, Yeah, for sure, let's do it. Oh like if she wants you're to not stay gonna with deny the offer. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. No, babe, we have to stay with the cockroaches. Listen, but, babe, okay, I'm comfortable here. Yeah. Okay, this is my safe haven. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a different life. It's and you know, it's like she's not like stuck up or anything. She right, just right. is not used to it. Right. It's just like the perspective is different. Yeah. Right. Well, how, how does she support your career the most? Uh, I think basically just by not telling me to get a real job. That's nice. You know, it's a words of affirmation. Yeah, I mean, I think she just like she doesn't she doesn't think it's. A, I've asked her before. I'm like, do you think what I'm doing is crazy? Like this comedy thing? And she's like, no, that's good enough. She doesn't have to come to every show or like write jokes with me or anything. It's just nice to have someone that's like, no, I believe in what you're doing. That's nice. Yeah. That's that, that's because because you do meet comics where their partners are like, come on, when are you going to give this up? You know. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. I like would, I know a guy who broke up with a girl because she was like, well, you're never going to be like successful. So like, wow. When are you when are you done with this? When are you done with this and we can <laughs> move on? Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no. if you you've. you've have you got a partner? No, no. Have you had girlfriends who have like had to deal with comedy? No, not really. <laughs> like, no, not really. Like, it hasn't gotten that serious ever. Mm. But I mean, I yeah, like I'm talking to this girl right now where like she's she's super dope and you know very encouraging and supportive in that way too. Like, but, but I get always, the sense they're that they're always th- supportive at the start. <laughs> the problem is when comedy comedy becomes your other girlfriend. Comedy becomes the thing you're doing instead of spending time with them. Why are you going out tonight? I thought we could watch a movie. No, I'm at work. And like explaining that it's work because it's fun. Mm. And you see your friends and you have a beer and what all. Like yeah. that can be really hard for a right. relationship. Well, I feel like it, 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 it. That changes if you just if you learn how to communicate that stuff early on. Yeah, the more so, you have, you're willing to have those difficult conversations at the beginning. Yeah, the easier it'll get when those moments come. Yeah, so like when I was staying with Julia in New Jersey, I went over and stayed with her for like three months. It was kind of like a trial period for our relationship. We didn't know if we'd it'd work. So I oh, like, so you, you met online. We met online in New York. We spent a week together and then COVID happened. We didn't see each other for like two years. Oh, and you still stayed together? We stayed in touch. Oh, okay. Um, nice. And then when I came back, I was like, I'm going to come back. Uh, and I, the US government lets you stay for three months without a you visa. Just, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, look, I can stay for three months. Do you want to give it a shot? And she's like, yeah, I like it. Let's, let's try it out. And so I just went and lived with her for three months. In New Jersey. Oh, wow. And uh, and at the start, because I, I was like, I'm going to still do mics and stuff. Like, I want to still do comedy. I want to just sit in your apartment for three months. Um, explaining to her that she's like, are oh, you going to a show? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, what, are, they, are they paying you? And I'm like, no, I can't get paid here because I don't have a visa. So I, these are just free shows. And she's like, well, why wouldn't you just spend the night with me? And I said, well, that would be like me telling you to take the day off work. Right. You know, mm. it would be me, like me saying, hey, don't go to work today. Let's just hang out. And she's like, I can't do that. I'm like, well, that's that's what thing. that is. That's yeah. what that is. And then what was her response? And yeah, we figured it out. Once she kind of understood that it was fine. And has has there been moments recently or up to that this point now where there's been pushback? I think it's hard for me and I think it's hard for most comics to take a break from comedy yeah to turn off from comedy and just mm-hmm. focus on your life and that's like yeah like she asked me the other day she's like oh, i want to do this thing in like july do you have a gig that day and i'm like well i don't yet but there could be but i might and she's mm-hmm. like well can i book it and i'm like you can book it but 
if something comes up. I can't guarantee I'll be around. That's hard. Yeah, that's the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because like the, in a way, like you're talking about second girlfriend, like um, it is the priority in, in a sense because it's like, you know, this is how you make a living, right? So you have to work at it. But And it, it's a passion. It's a well. passion too, so it's both. And, yeah, and this but, is why I say it's like a second girlfriend because the, the love and the passion you feel for the, for the art form is it is like you're you're splitting your love. You're like, yeah, yeah. Here's the love I have for you and here's the love I have mm-hmm. for for this narcissistic thing I do yeah. that makes me like arguably less money than just working at like Wendy's or right. whatever, you know? Well, at first. At first. The goal is obviously, you know, yeah. you to get scale really successful, up. you scale right. up and then you level up and then you blow up, become a millionaire. Like that's the whole, the main goal. But um, yeah, I think, I, but that's, that's, I feel like. But it doesn't happen for everyone, right? Yeah. So some people that never happens and then they've, they've spent all this emotional capital mm-hmm. on this thing that didn't pan out. And it's like, you don't know if you're going to be the guy that makes it until you make it. Right. So there's that, that, you know, even now, right? You've got like, you've got a bunch of followers, you've got the podcast, you can, but you're still, I don't know if you're where you, where you want to be. Right? No, of course not. But that's the whole point is like, you have and to like bo- if this is as far as you get, are you going to be happy with that? Or are you going to feel like, oh, fuck. Mm. No, yeah. Well, I think there's a bit, a bit of both. It's like one, maintaining your passion. And still doing the thing that makes you happy. Yeah. And then eventually getting to a point where you can sustain this passion yeah. in a way to not have to like worry or stress about like money or living or eating the proper foods you want to eat or spending time with people you want to spend time with. Uh, I think it has to get to that point. And then that, that's when it should be a base level for the rest of your life. Yeah. At and the that, very least. And that takes a long, like how long have you been doing it? Just like nine years. Yeah. So I've been doing it 12, but two of those years were COVID. So 10. Well, yeah. So same. roughly seven the for me then. If but that's like, the case. I think it probably takes another 10. Yeah. To, to get to the point we're talking about. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It, I also think because of social media, it varies now. Yeah, it does, Before, yeah. maybe it was like traditionally, yeah, 20 years, you're set. But I think now it, it could happen at 10. It could happen at fucking 7. It could happen at 2. I mean, I've seen people who are selling out shows they've been doing two, three years. Two, three yeah. years. But I mean, but I don't know how long that lasts. The longevity and sustainability could be, yeah, not as great if it's that early. That's yeah. why I feel like it's important to be in the game for a long time and like not fake the reps on yeah. stage and yeah. you know, all, the, all the work you put behind it. Because when it does happen... You like you should be ready, and also right. what goes up comes down, and like yeah. nothing. Uh, you, I mean, you you and I are roughly the same age. Like we've been around long enough to have seen internet celebrity come and go very quickly. Yeah, there's I people know. that used Wonder to be the wonders. biggest YouTubers that now are nobodies. Literally, that don't know what they're doing now. Homeless. Yeah, it could they're be extreme cases. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, literally. Yeah, yeah. And so. S- yeah, you can't, like, this is the thing I was talking to someone about the other day. They were talking about, like, you got to build your own audience. And they're like, yeah, you just hit the social media, whatever. Build your own audience. I'm like, that's not your audience. That's Facebook's audience. That's Instagram's audience. Hmm. As long as they let you on their platform, that's an audience you have access to that are there for you, but they're not yours. You don't have, to, you don't have a way to contact them. If tomorrow Instagram shuts your account down, where do you find them? Right, some other platform. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you got to start again. Well, that's why it's important to get people's like you know emails or you know text numbers. You know what I'm saying like this is what Louis did. This is what Louis did that none of the other comics did. Is that he took he got emails. Mm-hmm. He got a way to directly contact people. And it works. It works. Yeah, yeah. I I get emails from him like because that's how much I I was I like I, said, I supported him and like it's sick because you get all the specials, send you all the you know all the shows he does and everything. Yeah. And I'm like oh this is, this is amazing. But yeah, that's 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 the thing. It's like it's the work you got to put into it to save yourself in the future. Yeah, and like he he got offered a lot of money from like Ticketmaster or whatever. He could have just taken a big chunk of change, done shows, done the done that that way, made his money that way. But he wouldn't have had any control over his own trajectory. Mm-hmm. And when the when they pulled the plug, that could have been it for him. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I don't trust any of these things because like. You know, again, that's like, how many sites did you see come and go, MySpace was the biggest thing? Where is it now? You know, like Dig was a big thing. I never, Where is it now? never even heard of that. Uh, the first thing I ever did in comedy, I wrote for a website called Cracked.com. <laughs> do you remember Cracked? They no. used to do listicles. It's like five things you didn't know about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jews or whatever. Okay, yeah. Right? They used to be, when, when 
the first time they published an article of mine, it was 2012. I, even, I hadn't even done stand-up yet. I just liked writing comedy and I submitted something to them. They paid me 500 US dollars. Not bad. And it got a million and a half views. And this is the internet. Pre-social media, really. It's like, like literally, yeah. Like Facebook over, was still Over a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, a million and a half views was this crazy Amazing. number. Yeah. And it was the biggest website on the planet. That website exists now, but no one reads it. Like mm. no one reads it. It went from being the place for comedy on the internet to no one even... You mention it now. You didn't even know what it was. I had no idea. But it was like... It's hard to overstate how popular this website was at the time. Mm. And yeah. they'll, 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 they'll all go... They'll all come and go. I know. That's why it's good to keep on top of things while you can and then have different pockets where you can access, you know? I guess this is why podcasting is... Yeah, you have different platforms, different avenues, mm. right? It's like... But that's the thing. That's the game you have to play. Yeah. If you want to do this, there like you you can't be s- singular. There's got to be more layers to to what or, you're doing in a way. You can just be trans. That's also a good idea. That's also a way to get an audience. Yeah. Hey, I'm in my transition era, so <laughs> you have to give me opportunity. You're transitioning from Canadian yeah. to Australia. <laughs> yeah. Or else what you're a bigot, mate. So a, it's always funny when like I always think when like when. International artists come here. If they have an English accent, I'm always like, oh, that's nice. Because Australia is still a very, like, we're still very influenced by England. We have a lot of British TV. Uh, a lot of people have roots back to England still. We're still, like, we have a king still. Like, it's a colony mentality still, yeah. sort of. And I'm always like, oh, that's nice. Like, you're an English comic. You're here. You know, it's, it feels like a shared culture. Whenever someone has, like, a North American accent, I'm like, hey, you couldn't make it over there? <laughs> like, why would you be here? Yeah. Why would you be here if you were... Good. Yeah, you weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> you nerd. Is, it's just bigotry. <laughs> it's just bigotry. Where it I'm is like, pure bigotry. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, you got that accent if you can't you can't hack it over in the yeah. big leagues. It's like people who play basketball in like Europe. Right. When they couldn't make it in the NBA. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? You're yeah. cheating. Yeah. Yeah. You're a cheater. But you're going back, so it's like Yeah, that's true. I'm not trying to like colonize this area. You're not trying yeah. No. Just there for are a year. Acts, there are acts who come here and they like build a thing and you're like yeah. Okay, interesting. I see. What, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You trying to get back at me and my <laughs> people? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's cool, man. Um, I'm gonna go to Canada. I'm gonna be the biggest Australian comic in Canada. That'd be hilarious. Are there any Australian comics in Canada? Not that I know of. Yeah, you could be the first. Yeah. Well, there. Uh, actually, my friend James did comedy in Canada for a few years, but now he's but back here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could be the first, man. Man, they love us. They do. They do like him. They yeah. Do, they're, they're, yeah. Canadians do love Australians just as much as Australians love Canada, Canadians. Yep. Yeah, so you'd be great, man. It's Death funny. Is. It's funny because we we consume so much American television. Do, do you have people been making Canada jokes to you? A little bit. Yeah. A- every time I go on stage, someone in the audience, hey, yeah, we have hey? like we ha- we understand jokes about Canada because right. we watch so much American television. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, it's the same shit. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it's like Canada is to America what New Zealand is to Australia. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Pretty much. Did we? Do they say that you guys fuck sheep? Canadians? Yeah, I don't think so. What's their thing about you guys? Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Moose. Yeah, right. Fucking beavers. Hockey. Hockey. Yeah, hockey's a big one. Our one is that the Kiwis fuck sheep. I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's so weird. Because my friend James had a funny joke where he goes, <laughs> "Australians say that New Zealand is fuck sheep." And New Zealanders say that Australians are idiots, uh, and which is probably true because the thing we say is the kind of thing only an idiot would come up with. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. But, you know, it's just culture. Would you ever go back to Iran? I c- I've never been, and I can't go, unfortunately. What do you mean you can't go? Oh, because your parents. You know. Yeah, it's too risky. Yeah. yeah. If it opened up, would you go? No. Really? Well, what do you mean opened up? Like... Like, like if it was if, safe, if they were like, yeah, don't oh. worry, you, you, well, you're fine. Of course, but then uh, there's still that risk of like, okay, but like they're just, what are they luring me in? Yeah, is this their yeah, tactic? Yeah, like uh, what's that guy? You got um, the Saudi guy, Saudi, Jamal Khashoggi. What did, what happened? It's that journalist who like he went to the Saudi embassy and he's like, they're like, hey, we you need to renew your passport. No, oh. went in, they cut him into little pieces. <sighs> Jesus, yeah, that's possible. That could happen right now if I went there. Yeah, which is a shame. Really? Yeah, because they don't know. They they can. Just what about t- you? I mean, you're no his cousin. You're his cousin. You don't look like him. 
Would you go to Iran if you could? Yeah. You would? 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's meant to be beautiful. Oh, I know. It's a beautiful culture. Yeah. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Mate, you're in fucking Australia, 60,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broken. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, nerd. <laughs> and it's so brutal. Like the indigenous culture here, everyone just like, we keep being like 20,000 years and then we find a new thing and we're like 50,000 years. <laughs> like they've been here, they've been here so long. Oh, of course. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And like every time we think we're like, okay, now we figured out how long they, it will, we push it back again. Yeah. As you should. Yeah. You white on white crime. Yeah. It's wild. It's white. A colonizer. You've been to Uluru. You're going to go to Uluru. I've never been. I really want to go. You should go. Yeah. Well, maybe, it's, maybe if you have a gig there, I'll go. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think there are. Well, you know, there's a hotel there that has like a band room. You could try and book a gig there. Yeah, in front of 10 people. I loved people. it. I took Julia to Uluru recently. Oh, yeah? It was amazing. Yeah. What's the best thing to do there? It's the rock. That's all you can really do. Yeah. We right. took a camel ride. I like camels. Yeah. Sick. Of course you do. Yeah. Of course come on, you do. Look at me. Look at you. Yeah, come on. Look, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yo, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there, man. Um, I think yeah, you also have to catch a flight. So I do have to catch a um, flight. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thanks for hopping on. And uh, if you have any uh, uh, social media tags you want to. Oh, yeah. Over here. At David Rose Comedy, Instagram, TikTok. My TikTok has not grown. You know, I was the first Australian comedian on TikTok. Really? Yeah. Wow. A friend of mine knew about it way before anyone else. And he was like, you should put stuff on there. And it blew up and it got to 25,000 followers and it has never gone past 25,000 <laughs> followers. I put videos up now, it gets like they get like 400 views. Classic. Follow me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, OnlyFans, all that stuff. There you go. Yeah. He runs great shows in Australia. So if you're ever here, definitely hit him up. Hit him up. Yeah. Thanks, man. Let's do it. That was a good one. Defrez. Shout out Defrez. <laughs>